Well met lords and ladies, Jacob Potter speaking and a warm warm welcome to this week's Walking Wednesday. And yes, it's cold and raining again, oh well. So, about this week, yeah, I don't really want to talk about this week to be honest, not really that much. A lot of stuff happened that is quite private that I haven't actually mentioned to really anyone. That's not to do with me, but to do with other people. And uh, yeah, I just don't want to go into that topic really. I will say one thing though. I have actually finished, um, I have actually finished the Through Her Eyes, um, audio syncing, so what to the, uh, to my co-editors expect to see those messages on Discord sometime soon. Uh, in fact, possibly by the time you're watching, so you might have done this already. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do here. But yeah. One good thing about this week is that, um, I do have a new mic that seems to be working periodically. Yeah, it's weird because um, on certain applications it's perfectly fine and it does the job better than any mic I've had before. I think I haven't really got any verbal confirmation on that from people. They're all very wrapped up in themselves, I think. That would give me too much input on that. Um, and then sometimes it has incredible amounts of static and turns out very echoey in some applications. Unfortunately, one of those is Audacity, so it actually makes it more difficult to voice act. I don't know, perhaps Adobe Audition might be my new, um, my, my latest investment. I don't know. That or an audio interface, because I ordered it with the Phantom Power Supply. So... So, yeah, I don't know quite why. Oh uh, yeah, just because the audio interface itself didn't actually um, arrive properly, so for some reason it couldn't be sent over, so I left that off the list. Unfortunately it works just, just as well, but yeah, not, not that good. No static except for in that one application, Audacity. So yeah, mildly annoying, but at least now I can actually do some things. At least I hope so anyway. It's gonna make collabs a little bit. Actually no. No, it's maybe it's oh wait no. In Loilo itself it also works differently. So I used um So it's Craig for that in My City 3. See I'm talking about the week in the end. Um so in the My City 3 video is where I tested that out. If you don't know which one I'm talking about, I'm talking about season two, episode twenty-one, the orb of uh, the orb of uh, okay voice acting. Um, yeah, in that one, I decided to um, I decided to, to, to test it out and I uh, use two different things to record it. One was the actual inbuilt Lolo recorder, you know, as um, as per usual, and um, and the other one was Craig, which is the actual Discord bot that I, um, that I had used, well, that I used to use all the time to record all of the Mutant Girl voice acting before I got people to send in their own lines, basically. So some people still use Craig, actually, so sometimes there's got a couple of Craig downloads from people. Another car. Another one. But yeah, essentially I found that on Discord calls for some reason, it's it's perfectly functional. So I don't know what settings I have to tweak around with Audacity in to make that that work, or if it's to do with the actual inbuilt noise suppressions that Discord has. I actually I actually have no idea what that might what why that is. But yeah, that's that's on my that's on my list to solve. Again, there's still some other things that I have to do. I mean, I've got my, uh, my user lap mouse song to record. I've written it. But I've still got to record it and compile that stuff. Um, as for Through Her Eyes, I will be taking charge of the final scene. But I'm not trying to give, my, I'm trying not to give myself too much. Because I know that I can rely on my trusty and fast and efficient producers to help me with that stuff. Or editors, yeah, editors. Sorry, credit to them on. 
I've greater than those editors. Yeah. Um, sorry, so I lost track for a second. Um, so I think that's it. Um, yeah. Again, very, again, very tired. And there's a, there's, a, there's a few things weighing me down that I'm not going to get into, like I said before. So, not going to pull the pin on that grenade, at least not right now. Oh well, at some point I know that uh, in the uh, that Christmas will come because apparently this is actually my last week of um, last week of at least one of the courses that I'm doing. I don't yet know about the other one, but uh, I will soon find out. Then again, I have an essay that is uh, well, not an essay, but a critical reflection and a play that are due. So, we'll see. And those are due on Friday. As for the play, I have one scene yet to do. The Critical Reflection, I've got some, some more to do, but that's, I believe, 1,000 words? You know, as opposed to my 4,000 word essay that from the other course was just due slightly later. Which, ironically enough, I've made more progress on, actually, than the Reflection. But oh well. I look forward to doing the critical reflection actually. I don't know why. So I think it's because it's because I, I've done things um or at least in my head where I've documented stuff in the past. And fortunately it's not like um the performance logs that I used to do back in uh back in my sixth form days, where there was a, a specific things that you had to mention, specific things that you had to hit and mark. I mean yes, of course there is marking criteria. But I mean, in terms of what you actually write, it's more of a, it's more freeing, I suppose. Because obviously everyone's different processes. It's all about their writing process, so it has to be unique. It's not like you're all in the same lessons with the same prompts as such. Granted, there are a few similar prompts, but I don't know. So yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, well, that's, uh, that's quite a lot to do with the week, actually, more than I was expecting to say. I was expecting, actually, to use this time to really address a topic that uh, I was going to talk about last week, and I don't know if I did. I generally can't remember what I, what I say from one week to the next now. Um, but, but essentially, I was going to talk about the... Uh, I was going to talk about what's... Been, the discussions that um, that not Zoe and um, and Miss Devil have been having. If you don't know them, not Zoe is uh, not Zoe is a incredibly popular gacha tuber, and um, and Miss Devil is an also popular gacha tuber who is also a friend of mine, and uh, and also a fan of not Zoe, which is how I know about this whole about the whole not Zoe issue. I mean, not Zoe was discussing the idea of the of the gacha community dying due to trends, basically. Um, and about that, about that idea. I was going to, I was going to contribute to this back in, back when this all started, because it was a few weeks ago that both of them made their discussion videos. But yeah, I was going to formulate a, 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 a more coherent response than this. But actually, again, I've got, I've got other things to do. I might as well use this Walking Wednesday chance to really address that topic. So, essentially, what Not Zoe is saying is that when she looks up, um, looks up Gutch Life mini movie now, um, what she finds is that the mini movies that are getting they views most recently are getting a fraction of what they used to. The only person who's really doing much progress when doing story-based Gacha content, like series and such, is of course Rosie Closy. Who has of course has thrived on her originality. Again, that's debatable, that's for another day, because obviously the music freeze is not exactly the most original series. There have been plenty of band-based musical series in the past. Just that one happens to be the most competently produced. <laughs> but again, that's another that's a whole other topic. 
I'm sure that there's a, well, I, seen it, I know a few Rosie Clossy stands anyway that will defend her to the ends of the earth. So if I want to make a case about that, it'll have to be some other time. But as for the Not Zoe talk, she is right about the fact that Rosie is the only person who's really making, who's really making huge strides forwards. I don't think that could be a good thing or a bad thing, actually, because her, because her popularity is such that it, it really surpasses anything that came from before. People were making um, hundreds of thousands of views per certain videos at times. Whereas now it's tens of thousands. Again, not a huge... Well, I mean, yes, it is a huge difference. And it depends. I think the same creators that were making stuff before are being discouraged now from doing so. And rest assured, I am not one of those people. I know that my latest gacha video was in fact a trend, but that was that was me trying something out. I didn't realize that that was what was killing the gacha community in a way. Honestly, it's not the gacha community is dying. I think not Zoe refer referred to that in the wrong way. It's because it's because of all of these trends that are coming up now that the principle of the gacha community is no longer what it used to be. I've always said this, that to me, gacha was always a, there was always a way that, um, that somebody could very easily and very quickly, or more quickly than usual, could not they tell a story, convey something, express themselves artistically. Because it comes with a pre with a pre-made art style and uh, pre-made sets of uh, customized things. And yes, there's uh, there's avenues for there's avenues for gacha edits, for prop designers, for background designers, etc. etc. that go forward. But ultimately, you have those basic tools at your disposition. Anyone can do it, and plenty of people have. However, now because of the way that um because of the way that all these all these trends work uh the, the rise has a uh, has been such recently that that it's uh, that it's only those people who, who who seem to be copying what other people are doing in order to actually get some um, and to get notoriety like take the high trend the one that i did for example i mean i, I spent quite a significant amount of time on the, uh, uh, in comparison to everyone else, on my one, because I was doing like things about, oh yeah, making sure it was a scene that I could make fun of it for existing, really, for like a voice reveal, basically. And yeah, trying to do something different. And ultimately, I missed the bandwagon by a few hours. Yes, a few hours. That's how, that's how little threshold of a difference there is. So, uh, yeah, it does seem interesting. I know the glow-up trend that I did was also it was like weeks late. I get that much. I understand that part. But still, the point remains that um, that is something that is it. There is something to be updated very quickly. Clearly, doesn't take that long to actually set up under normal circumstances. And in the high trend, all you had to do was have a have a character in the background, maybe zoom in a little bit if you wanted to then uh, put, the, put the music on, say hi into a microphone, and that's it. Not very complicated at all. I want to stay on level ground. I'm going to go back this way. It's downhill over there. So yeah, going on to what Miss Devil said, um, she said, I to play, I to play devil's advocate a bit. She said, well, perhaps this is just the way to get popular now. Which, honestly, doesn't aid much to the conversation. Because that was precisely what Zoe's argument was. It was, that's the way to get popular now, but it really shouldn't be. Because Gacha was so much more. The community was doing so much more. They both refer to voice-acted uh, Gacha content. Which was, of course, making a rise. Ever since, um, ever since February, really, when I first started um, doing, I started auditioning for them, I felt like that was right at the top when it, the whole idea was rising. To be honest, and 
I don't know if that's dwindled now because I haven't tried to advertise a voice acting project in some time because I've got plenty on hiatus. I will say that there are a few of them that are still going on. Like I'm still getting um, requests to submit lines now with the new microphone that I have from certain people. Again, mostly on GLVA actually, which if you don't know is the server that I made specifically because there were so many voice acting servers in the first place. And now, not so many of those are actually alive and well. Yeah, but there's so because I said before this uh, with voice acting projects, people don't realise how much work they are. And a few of them got cancelled. Well, most of them got cancelled. I will say, you know, back in 2019, the Mutant Girl obviously took one month per episode release, basically, excluding part twos of episodes, which were a lot less. Alright, I'm gonna go this way. I'm just overlooking the same place I was before, but just went in a circle for it. But yeah, not, I mean, obviously, if people want to make stuff quickly, that's not ideal. And uh, yeah, going back to Rosie Clossy, actually, people complain to her that her content takes too long to actually make, that they're saying, oh yeah, I want this new episode to come out. You know, if you want perfection from people, you've gotta give them time to do it. So again, that makes perfect sense. Again, I'm quite impressed with the way that she's actually managed to do everything. And again, she uses the same editing software program that I do, and yet is able to, you know, it has much more knowledge of production techniques, and also clearly has, uh, and also, cl and also clearly has uh, the drive to actually make that as good as possible. So absolutely, um, and now apparently the next episode is animated. I'm reviewing the episodes on the Butter Bunch, by the way, which is why oh, more dogs. <laughs> which is why I actually have. Um, I was going to say, <laughs> yeah, which is why I've actually watched the um, the rest of the episodes yet. But I do know that the next one is, of course, the typical animated style, which, of course, takes even longer to do if you want to go down that route. I know that uh, Tales of Dramadonia has, certainly. But yeah, um... But so that's why, that's why trends are so problematic, because sometimes... Because obviously, on YouTube, it's always said in general that your work hours don't always reflect your success. And I get that. I mean, particularly, um, particularly Aiden DeBest has also has said this multiple times, that um, his, most, his most viewed videos sometimes take a couple of days versus the ones that he spends, he spends maybe a week on. And I get, I get that, so I get where he's coming from. In my case, in my case, the truth about Travis video actually took um, a lot longer than you would think. And the script of that was written almost a year in advance of me producing that, that episode. So, honestly, that's not, honestly, I'm not the best example of that, but actually, most people, that's what they say. However, in this case, the gotcha community are taking it one step, one step further. And yes, Miss Devil is correct. That is the way that people are becoming popular nowadays but that does not mean that that's a good thing what not zoe is saying is that it should not be this way and it should be that people are encouraged to go forward and keep doing things i know that i certainly am i said this before i was doing voice acting before it was trending and i shall continue to do so possibly even afterwards one thing that i will agree with miss devil on is that there is a real possibility for actual, um, for an actual re resurgence of things. 
that people will get bored of trends and go back to go back to the series. And I personally welcome the day because I don't want to do a gotcha review series of things when they're actually <laughs> when they're just trends because otherwise they just become one of those top 20 high trend videos which take even less effort to do because you're just essentially copying and pasting them into an editing software rendering the same video over and over again so I do wonder going forward into 2021 what the gacha community is going to be like I do hope that there's going to be that one person who manages to emerge and transcend that and actually do something series based possibly quickly maybe not focus too much on the animation but we'll just cut but we'll carry that forward and see how far they get who knows maybe that person will be me it uh, remains to be seen I don't know imagine that I suppose all we can do now is wait and find out but I of course would urge people not to leave the gacha community just yet don't abandon hope essentially most people in the gacha community are very fickle and they go by example which is why the music freaks characters make such frequent appearances in other people's content i know that at some point someone will rise to the occasion and i personally welcome them and i would like to see them carry on them rise and them succeed but until that point how about supporting me by leaving a like or dislike because your opinion matters and also by subscribing given up hope on the road to 1k for this year but regardless i still want to see how far it is that i can actually get i actually checked my analytics recently and i, I apparently gained 371 subscribers across the entire year so i had like 425 beforehand or something i can't remember exactly what it was but yeah something along those lines so yeah definitely definitely want to continue to see my to see the the highest growth that i've had so far but that's already happened but yeah if you haven't actually done so already please subscribe again like or just like your opinion matters etc etc and on that note until next time farewell <laughs>